Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we are going to be solving a physics 7c practice problem. The topic that we're going to be looking at today is the one-dimensional wave equation. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like. It really helps our channel so much. So let's look at this problem. So spring break fun, we'll see. So you are relaxing on the beach during spring break, watching a buoy both in uh, the ocean waves. You calculate that it takes two seconds for the buoy to go from a crest to a minimum. I don't know how to pronounce that word. It's impossible if you speak Spanish, but uh, from maximum to minimum. After you start your uh, stopwatch, you observe that 10 seconds later, the buoy is at a minimum. The waves are moving to the left at a speed of 2 meters per second and the maximum displacement is 50 centimeters above equilibrium. The allocation of the buoy is 4 meters to the right of what you define to be the origin. Fill in the plugs provided below for the entire range marked on the x-axis. Explain your work. Alright, so as you can see, I have both of my uh, plots here ready to go and we were basically given a bunch of information that we have to you know, sort of use a little piece at a time to see if we can complete our uh, plot. So let's just do that, let's see. This is an interesting little, uh, you know, problem. What color am I gonna use? Let's do, let's do this one. So first information that we are, that we are given is that it takes two seconds for a, a buoy to go from max to minimum. This means that my period is actually four seconds, right? Because my period, you know, let's look at this graph that I have over here. So if this is one period, so my period is from either max to max or mean to min. So if it takes two seconds to go from here to here, then it must take four seconds to go from here to here, right? So like double that amount from max to min and then min to max. So that basically uh, means that our period is actually four. And I can definitely see a lot of people getting confused by that, but that's just the way that period is defined. It's from max to max or min to min, or, you know, twice from max to min. But anyways. So now let's see, so at t is equal to 10 seconds, the buoy is at a minimum. And that minimum is, oh, here's the maximum displacement over here, 50 centimeters. So in this case, ocean level is gonna be our zero. So that means that we don't have any uh, equilibrium position. So why not is equal to zero? And then my amplitude is equal to 50 centimeters. That's going to be the case for both of my graphs. So both of my graphs are going to have a maximum over here and a minimum over here. Maximum over here. Minimum over here. And then at 10 is equal to 10, the buoy is at a minimum. So over here at 10, we are actually at a minimum like this. Now, I think we have everything that we need to actually complete this graph when you think about it, because we already have a period, right? So that means that if I go uh, one, two, three, four, that this is a minimum. Then one, two, three, four. So two must be a minimum. And then if I go halves of that, because it takes two seconds to go from max to min, so that means that one, two, so this is a maximum. And then one, two, so this is a maximum. And then I go one, two, so eight is a maximum and then 12, you know, same thing. Must be a maximum. Uh, and then if you just 
if you just remember how this wavy thing works and that it is divided in fourths, then that means that one and three are intersections, five and seven are intersections, nine and 11 are intersections, and then we're, we're basically done. Let's just put a little uh, a picture over here, basically. So let's just make sure that it hits all of the spots that it must be hitting like this no we're gonna go up and we're gonna go down you know you don't have to be necessarily super precise with this we understand just make sure that you know you mark these points really well because these are the ones that we're gonna be grading we don't really care about how your graph looks like we're just gonna be looking at your uh you know at your points of interest you know the important ones oh okay so we're done that was easy so now we basically just have to figure out this guy and this guy is, you know, let's see what information we have over here. So the uh, buoy is located four meters to the right of uh, what you consider as equilibrium. That, that just means that this is X equal to four. What else do we have as an information? Well, this is T is equal to 11 and uh the buoy is four meters away from us so the buoy is over here so say you're so this is a position graph right so you as a person like you the spring breaker you are right here at zero right and then the buoy is actually over here so how do you freaking draw a buoy i don't know i'm just gonna put like a little boat here maybe yeah, so like the buoy is over here, you observer are over here, you're four meters apart from each other. And at t is equal to 11 seconds, we uh, the uh, buoy is actually at zero. So the buoy is actually right here, at zero. So now uh, we need to figure out maybe a lambda, so that would be helpful. So we have a velocity of two meters per second. And we already have T. So if we go to our auxiliary equation, which is B is equal to lambda over T, then lambda is equal to BT. So it's equal to four times two. So that is equal to eight meters. Eight meters, right? So every eight meters, we go from max to max or mean to mean. Uh, so that basically means that my uh, crossings here, my inflection points or whatever you want to call them are right here, every four, like this. Now here's the, uh, and then if it's every four, then every, uh, you know, whenever we are here, these points are either going to be maximums or minimums, right? And let me explain you why I don't know for sure. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. So either this and this are maximums or this is a maximum or like we don't know. Essentially what I'm trying to say is that at this point that we figure out this, our two possibilities are start here, go up, down, and then up like this. And that would be uh, one possibility. But the other possibility is actually start down, go up, and then do this, right? So both of them are possible at this point. And the way that we're going to be solving this conflict is because the waves are moving to the left. So hear me out. Basically, we have two options. We have the option in which, you know, the wave is coming down like this. Or we have option B, which is the one in which the wave is coming up like this, right? So if we look at this point, which is at t is equal to 11, which is, you know, this entire graph, we can see that as, as time goes by, the buoy you know, from 11 to 12, it actually went up like this. 
So our graph over here needs to be consistent with that if our wave is moving because, you know, this is the exact same wave. So for option A, if we're looking at the wave that goes up then down like this, which is option A, in order for the buoy to start moving uh, up, then we would be needing a right movement like this. So the buoy starts going up like this, right? So whew. if we are doing option B, which is the one that starts down and then goes up, then if this is the true wave or like if this is the actual right answer, then this wave must be moving to the left. So that the buoy actually goes up as time goes by, which is what we know as a matter of fact is true. So the right answer is actually the one that starts down here and then goes up here, hits here, and then goes up here like this. This has to be the right answer because you can see that, you know, if this wave is moving left, which is what the problem is literally telling us, it's moving left, then as this wave moves, our buoy is gonna go upwards, and this is the exact same uh, situation that we are watching over here. So that is basically how we resolve this, you know, uh, is it up, down, up, or down, up, down? This is how we resolve it, by looking at this thing over here. And basically at this point, our graphs are uh, complete. Our graphs are 100% complete, that's really good. So um, let's see what part B is. Oh, calculate the phase constant for this wave. Show your work. Okay, again, tons of ways of calculating the phase constant, but I'm just gonna do it my way. My way uh, involves uh, substituting. So let's see. So I'm just gonna pick a point. All right, so let's just pick this point over here. So at x is equal to zero, time is equal to 11, y is equal to zero, like this, okay? And then I'm just gonna write my wave equation. So my wave equation, I'm just gonna look at here and write it down. So my wave equation is, you know, the generic one. So this is it. So now I'm just going to substitute the numbers. Uh, so y over here, I said that it is equal to zero. Amplitude is equal to 50 sine of 2 by, then this is 11 seconds. And then my period is equal to 4. Then this is plus zero because x is equal to zero plus the constant that I'm looking for, plus zero. Okay, so my phi, or like my fixed phase constant, zero divided by 50 is equal to zero. So this is a sine negative one of zero minus two pi 11, four. Okay, so let's just solve this. Um, Sine negative one of zero. I'm just gonna put it here so you believe me. So sine negative one of zero. Oh, sine negative one of zero is equal to zero. And then this is 22 divided by four. Uh, so this is 11 halves minus 11 pi halves, like this. And then you know if you wanna if you wanna uh, if you wanna go ahead and simplify it so it is between zero and two pi, you do you. This is already the final answer, which is totally correct. But if you wanna do that, or if Dana asks you to do it, or whatever, basically just have to divide this. Uh, eleven pi halves. Uh, eleven halves is basically equal to negative pi over two. So these two are equivalent to each other. Again, if personally, if nobody's asking me to go from here to here, I wouldn't. But if you want to go, if you want to go there, that's perfectly fine.
So this is how you get it. This is a little method that I use. And this is basically the end of the problem. So this was a, a very interesting problem in which we basically have to take um, information and make a graph. Usually we take information from the graph. Uh, information, I'm sorry, from the graph. But, you know, I, I, I really did enjoy this little problem. It was very interesting. So I hope that this was helpful to you guys. If it was, please make sure to leave a like. It really helps this channel. And I'll see you guys on the next video.